You know, we all have those moments in our life, whether it's a loss of a parent or, or the near loss of a parent, a pet, a marriage. We all have them where you are shattered. Somebody said to me as I was shattered, you pick up the pieces and you're like, oh gosh, I, I have to figure out how to put myself back together. And, and some people don't make it through that struggle. And someone said to me, Sasha, the only way you're going to get better, those pieces don't serve you anymore. Go out and give those pieces away. And that is the mindset that I move with today. Welcome to season six of Bridge the Gap, a podcast dedicated to informing, educating, and influencing the future of housing and services for seniors. Powered by sponsors AccuShield, Align, Hamilton Captel, Surface Master, Patriot Angels, The Bridge Group Construction, and Salinity. The contributors are brought to you by Peak Senior Living and produced by Salinity Marketing. Welcome to Bridge the Gap Podcast, this senior living podcast with Josh and Lucas here at the Summer Retreat Membership Meeting for Asha in Utah. A beautiful, actually a scale or spectrum of weather. We've had rain, we've had sun, We've seen some snow and today we have sunshine. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful outside. It is. And the voice that you're hearing right there is our great guest. I'm going to welcome Sasha Don. She is the founder of Utopia Experiences. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, for having me. It is a real pleasure to be here. I've been a fan for as long as I have been around and just really honored to be here. Oh, it's so great. So great. And a Bridge the Gap ambassador, one of 50, 60 people that are out there growing the Bridge the Gap mission to educate and inform and influence the senior living industry that we all love and we want to see improved. And so, Sasha, you have an incredible founder story. You're actually very new to the industry, but you're one of the most passionate people about this industry in a very short time. Why is that? I fell into it by accident, honestly. I mean, and I think the more I tell my story, the more vulnerable I get with my story, the less alone I feel. And I realize we all have a story as to why we're here. And so let me first say to the two of you, it's an honor to be here with you because while I don't know what brought you here, I know it's a story of passion, compassion, and almsgiving to give back and bridge the gap. Such a great theme and such a true to my heart because I saw a void in my own father and in my own life. My story was... 2020 during quarantine. I guess the backstory is uh, I'm a daddy's girl. My father is a Vietnam War hero. He was in the U.S. Army, Green Beret, Special Forces Paratrooper. Just a real badass. Yeah, it sounds like Can it. we say that? <laughs> yes, okay, you great, can. Great, great. Okay, so um, in his five tours of Vietnam, third time through, he got a Purple Heart. In his desire to return, it was very hard to him to come back to the States and not feel appreciated and welcomed, and so he went back. He then since retired and in his 80s living independently during quarantine, my father um, fell and had a stroke. We were notified by a neighbor, something's wrong with dad and you should call for help. And we did. And we learned that my father, two and a half days earlier, had been in his own fluids for many days near death, was in now a PTSD episode, um, believed he was in a ravine fighting for his life. So they rushed him to the VA hospital and five days later moved him to a skilled nursing. Those are words I had not heard. I did not know what an activities director was. Every day the doctors and nurses would give us a wonderful medical update, but really what they were saying is your dad's dying. Uh, You need to plan for his services. So we did. On the 11th day, I met Sue and Sue is an activities director. And she said, oh my gosh, I hear your pain. I can set up a FaceTime visit so I could say goodbye to my dad. I thought, wow, Sue. Sue, now I have met hundreds of Sues. So Sue set up a FaceTime visit and I thought this was gonna be an opportunity to connect with my dad. It was gonna be really wonderful and he was gonna feel better. And what I saw was all the things, loneliness, depression, isolation, but what changed the trajectory of my life is my dad was scared and I'd never seen fear in my dad's eyes and I couldn't do anything to help him. So Sue and I became really good friends because she was the connection to my dad. Some things I learned about Sue, she was overworked, understaffed, underpaid. Sue used her own money to buy the residents ice cream. She hadn't seen her grandchildren in weeks because we were all on lockdown and she chose to serve the residents. So at the time, I also was in lockdown and I was playing these, I was single living in the mountains in Colorado and playing these silly little games over Zoom versions of game shows to connect and engage myself 
and other people to each other. Christmas Eve of 2020, I worked for nine and a half hours and hosted hundreds of people together playing games to connect themselves. So I said to Sue, Sue, let me host this silly little game for you and your grandkids. No charge, because at the time it was my side hustle. I was making like 200 bucks an hour. So she said, if you're willing to do it for me for free, just could you do it for the residents? And I was like, whatever Sue wants. I mean, Sue could be Stuart or Sue or any other activities director, you know, you just want to help them when you can. So I sent her a Zoom link. She put it on four iPads. One was for my dad, two other residents recovering from a stroke, and the fourth was a gentleman, ATV accident, mid-30s, now paralyzed from the waist down. So these people hadn't seen anyone without a mask in months. And then is me. I show up in my yellow game show blazer, a bow in my hair, red lipstick, all things that I don't wear. But when I put that on, it's like my superhero cape. I am an extroverted version of my already extroverted self. And I hosted this silly little nostalgic game. It didn't need instructions. We didn't need to be told how or why, but for 30 minutes, we cheered each other on, we solved puzzles, we connected. And at the end of it, for the first time in all the games I had played during quarantine, my contestants were all crying, my dad included. I said goodbye and I closed the computer and I sat back and I thought, I don't know what this is, but this is what I'm supposed to do. In kindergarten, my teacher, Miss Whitaker, pat me on the shoulder once and she said, it's okay, Sasha, you'll be good at something one day. Because I was like demolishing this like, you know, clay squirrel. <laughs> Find your passion. And here I was almost 50 years old and I'd done a lot of things and made good money. But I never felt like I felt in that moment. So I called my aunt, my aunt who worked with old people. That's all I knew about my aunt. But this is who my aunt was. My aunt at the time, now retired, was the president of Leading Age California didn't know what that was. She was the CEO for JHA, which stands for Jewish Home for the Aging, lots of communities. And I said, hey, Aunt Molly, remember that silly little game we played? This is what just happened with my dad. And she said, let me help you. She got me in contact with leading age experts, chief medical officers. I just started telling my story like I am today and anyone that would help me. And in this industry, people are willing to help. More than any other industry I've worked at, whether it's banking, hospitality, tech, it just hear people see what you're doing. They see your passion and they know the need. So we developed a game. Uh, we have a game ourselves. It is free from litigation. It's a version of Wheel of Fortune and that's what we do. We do classic game shows. We are not Fortnite, we are not we, we are not the new up and coming tech company. We are reminiscence, we are gamification, and we connect residents to themselves, to the community, when they can or cannot come out of a room, when they can or cannot get on a plane and go fly, when their family cannot come in, we can connect them. And so we have this amazing game that is connected and engaged and offers reminiscence and Honestly, as I started playing the game with my dad, I, I started to get better every day. And I can't, I'm not saying it was my, it was my dad's will to live and it was my dad's fight, but I saw the spark in his eye. And even, you know, post-stroke, I didn't have to remind him how to play. I just said, do you want to spin or solve? And, and, and if you needed help, he could call on a friend next door. And today we have just shy of a hundred customers. We're playing hundreds of games every day. And, um, I'm having the time of my life. Wow. Well, what an amazing story. That I think, Lucas, maybe you've gotten to hear pieces of that. Yeah, yeah. That's actually my first time. And thank you so much for sharing that. There's so many questions I have, but one thing that just resonated with me was, I don't know Sue, but I know a lot of people like Sue. And right. I think we work in an industry that, as you, I think, mentioned, there's a lot of Sue's out there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something, too, of how much many individuals in our industry, especially those activity professionals, I think, I don't know what her title was, but it mm -hmm. sounded like she was some level of activity professional, but even paying for things out of their own money and, and probably, if like a lot of activity professionals, not making a lot of money and sacrificing a lot to be able to do that to help make not only an impact in the resident's life, but what I heard a lot there is, I mean, the impact she had on your life, the influence now from that one Sue impacting the residents there. But I mean, you just think of that circle of influence of one person that is probably not given a spotlight very often 
probably not giving a very big budget very often, but so much expectation from that individual. What a cool tool. So what are the other kind of games that you have found that are really resonating with, with residents and helping improve engagement? Well, we know, we have learned today that residents feel like an afterthought when it comes to technology. So our model for what we are leading the way with senior game therapy is really not teaching them something new, but using the old tools that are comfortable to them to integrate something new. So today we have Spintopia. It took us about a year and a half and blood, sweat and tears. Not really blood, but it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> um, so, but what we do to make it different is it's customized in the contrast. So the colors are specific to seniors. We know that yellow background with black letters is best contrast. We have done research to make sure the sounds are on par. You know, we don't have the bummer noise. There's not a bankrupt. It's no fun to lose fake money, but they want to see that they earn money. Um, it's kind of a funny joke. It's all right. It's all right, folks. It's not real money. And they're like, <laughs> what? What are we doing here? But we customize the puzzle. So we have over 5,000 puzzles in our first game, Spintopia. And they're the words that matter. So um, my dad, to bring it full circle, he's living with dementia, but has recovered from a stroke and is living in an assisted living community about a half an hour away from me. And, and they play Spintopia. We have four levels. So we like to say it's only inclusive if everyone can play. So whether it's memory care to independent living, but the puzzles can be meaningful and impactful to them. So as my dad says, we don't want any Britney Spears, TikTok BS. <laughs> we want some good old words. So it's Gomer Pyle words. It's 40s and 50s. Even though we have that many puzzles, we also have customized puzzles. So one of our large customers does a monthly theme, like a 1960s sock hop or, or 50s sock hop, where they transform their entire buildings into the theme. So we put 120 puzzles in there around that. But if it's your family member's birthday and she can't travel, we can talk about what's important to her, whether it's gardening club or being a sailor, if that was your grandfather or, or whatever her interests were throughout her life. And we can customize that to be the puzzles. And then, you know, the last puzzle is, you know, happy birthday, grandma. And so we have found in, in reminiscence therapy specifically is when we put something in there that is meaningful to them, when they solve the puzzle or when it's solved by a family member, it organically strikes a conversation. I mean, I'd Zoom with my dad today and he can show up for 10 minutes and tell me, you know, his knee hurts and he hasn't left his room and all things wah wah. But it's honestly because he didn't remember that he got out that day. But because I know on Tuesdays he plays Spintopia, I can log on as a virtual audience member and I can watch my dad. I'm working at 1030, but I can see that my dad is lit up. He's engaged. I don't care if he solved the puzzle. You know, they play in teams. So if we were all on a team, we'd all be team red, for example, and we'd have some red beads on. So I might maybe in a moment forget where I am or what I'm doing. But if they say red, I can look down and I see I belong. I belong with you. These are my Bridge the Gap friends and we're going to solve this puzzle together. And it gives me a sense of purpose and meaning. And we find that in communities whether it's a private game with a family doing therapeutic without knowing it, connection or connection and engagement. And, and you know, we've hosted for 675 people on a virtual game and we've also played one on one. So we are coming out with more games. But right now we're just really we feel like we kind of cracked the code in like how we serve this industry. We used to just sell access to our game and people would say, Sasha, your game's so cool, but we have this big labor issue in the industry like you're. You're just giving us another cool tool in our belt. And so then we launched UE Live and that's where we hire game hosts. We hire activities directors. We hire stay-at-home moms, improv actors, retired teachers, just incredible human beings. And they get to put their own version of Game Show Blazer on. So your community can play against your community. And now there's this competition and there's this like camaraderie within the portfolio of whatever the community is. and. We're doing something really cool. <laughs> well, it is really cool. And uh, and the journey that's gotten you there, I mean, the, the story you have is, I'm still stuck on the beginning of the story, but how far since that moment, and there was a phrase you said, you'd never, the moment you saw fear from your dad. And I think a lot of us, we can resonate with that because, you know, our parents are the ones that shape things for us oftentimes. And and our dads oftentimes are those fearless people. But that moment that you saw him afraid, 
to now. How long are we talking? What's this journey and this timeline been? Because you've accomplished a lot, I think, in a short amount of time. December of 2020 was when he had the stroke and was hospitalized out of state. Um, So I was on the East Coast and my father was in Arizona. And so we launched a year and a half later the game. It took us that long to make it. I mean, we're a scrappy little startup, you know, and so we we move on a slower pace. Took us a year and a half and it took my dad nine months to, to really get to a position where he could travel. He couldn't be on a plane. He needed a medical transport, and that was out of our budget. And so um, my dad recovered in skilled nursing and then moved to a private home care. But those nine months of his life, he lost that. He has no memory of any of it. But I see him today. I actually just took him to North Carolina to train a customer with me. And, you know, he likes to travel when he, I mean, little road trips, but I took him down to North Carolina and we trained the community. And, you know, I tell the story real quick in a few minutes to the residents and then we, we play the game. They were like, but wait, how's your dad? How's your dad? And I was like, well, as a matter of fact, my dad traveled with me today. He's actually sitting in the back and he's going to hand out the candy because we give out prizes. And he says, I'm alive, folks. I'm alive. (laughs) Uh, He's joyful and I'm happy to have him with us. Lucas, you never know a moment when you choose to do something to help someone, what that's going to create. And I go back to Sue. I'm sure she was just doing what Sue does. Never did she know that she was going to change a patient slash resident's life, help them on their recovery battle. Probably never had any clue that she would get the thanks for a whole new startup platform that's serving an entire industry and helping people with engagement. And the other thing that I'm hearing from this is, you know, that story, how you started, that was very much like not a happy story. You know, it was like trauma. But out of that the beauty that can come from sometimes of our our worst experiences and our worst moments. And so congratulations on you turning that into something and, and through your dad's quite honestly, that struggle moment that helped you find your purpose through that. I know you're helping a lot of people um, with tools to help them live their purpose. And and it's a really cool story. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what all's happening. I'm like, where have I been? I haven't heard, I haven't even heard about this. And you're one of our Bridge the Gap ambassadors and you're just out cheerleading the industry all the time and thankful that we can use the platform to share this awesome story. We also thank Allison Bonner. She was the catalyst to get this introduction, to bring your story and utopia experiences into uh, the Bridge the Gap ecosystem. It's been great to get to know you and and kind of see this journey and and, uh, be a part of also supporting your story and many others. Thank you. And thank you, Allison. And you're right. I mean, that moment with Sue was pivotal. You know, we all have those moments in our life, whether it's a loss of a parent or, or the near loss of a parent, a pet, a marriage. We all have them where you are shattered. Somebody said to me as I was shattered, you pick up the pieces and you're like, oh gosh, I, I have to figure out how to put myself back together. And, and some people don't make it through that struggle. And someone said to me, Sasha, the only way you're going to get better, if those pieces don't serve you anymore, go out and give those pieces away. And that is the mindset that I move with today. Like I go with the intent to serve and I go with the intent to give these broken pieces away because they're serving other people just like Sue's served me. Wow. Awesome. Well, I know our listeners that might not have heard about your story are going to want to connect to you. We're going to do that. And we're going to do it through the Bridge the Gap Network. That's right. That's right. BTGvoice.com. You can go there. You can learn how to become a Bridge the Gap ambassador, just like Sasha. And you can also access this content and so many more to hear these stories about people in our industry to help educate, inform, and influence the senior living industry that we serve, know, and love. Connect with us on social. LinkedIn is a great spot to message us, be a part of the conversation once this episode is launched. We'd love to hear your resident story engagements. We'd love to hear from the Sues out there that are on the front lines of serving seniors and older adults right where they are, keeping them engaged to give them and their lives dignity and enjoyment. Thanks for listening to another great episode of Bridge the Gap. Thanks for listening to Bridge the Gap podcast with Josh and Lucas. Connect with the BTG Network team and use your voice to influence the industry by connecting with us at btgvoice.com.